Hey guys, it's Christina. Welcome back to my channel. And I am here with my friend Jill Gavargzion, and she is uh, the writer, director of a movie called The Stylist, and she's here to tell us about her new movie. So uh, Jill, you want to introduce yourself and um, say whatever, <laughs> whatever you want to say about The Stylist. Yeah. First, I got to say you nailed the name <laughs> after only trying once. <laughs> um, not an easy name to say, everybody. Uh, yeah, I'm Jill Gavargazian, also known as Jill Six to a lot of people. I um, made a lot of short films and finally, after all these years, have made my first feature film, which it actually did start as a short called also called The Stylist. It's now streaming on Arrow Player, which is Arrow video streaming channel. You can sign up for a 30 day trial to check out the movie and you'll want to stay. I promise. Cause they've got so many awesome movies. <laughs> yeah. And I'm, I'm going to put a link in the description too, but yeah, I actually, um, and, and I think you actually have a YouTube channel with all your short films, right? Cause I yes. logged on and looked at some of them, um, including the stylist. And so, um, so I would, you know, I, I wanted to make sure I saw the short film before I saw the feature film. And, um, and uh, yeah, what, what is the, the premise of the movie? Well, from a very simp to start, it's about a hairstylist that is also a serial killer. But the, the feature itself is about her downward spiral and her one of her favorite clients asks her to do her hair for her wedding and she's real. That's really not her thing, which is totally based on me. I'm also a hairstylist. I don't like doing wedding hair. <laughs> and um, but she sees it as a way to get close to this woman. Olivia is the other character. And through that hopes, this friendship will build. It does not go that her her way and things wildly go out of control without spoiling it too much. Yeah. Um, oh, my gosh. <laughs> it's really something we set out to make as like a really dark character piece mm -hmm. and but you know infused our love of horror and slashers in there whenever we could did you have like any particular movies that that inspired it quite a few kind of the the original concept was it's weird because it's a very different looking film but uh Leatherface in the original Texas Chainsaw had oh, cool. <laughs> a, a, like a influence on her, like in the sense of how they both wear, they wear the skin of their victims while, you know, hers is different. She wears hair, but it, yeah. the same idea of how they're kind of escaping into another person's identity in a way. Mm -hmm. um, but she, 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 Claire, the lead character, the stylist was also um, largely in, inspired by May Lucky McKee's film, which I know you have connections to the Lucky McKee world. <laughs> um, in fact, I to so much to the point that I was nervous for him to see the movie. I was like, he's gonna know how much May was influencing me. Oh <laughs> I've even gosh. got my I've even got my May poster hiding behind me back here. Oh, cool. but, um, yeah, I, I actually just just hung up mine um, in my room. It, um, I have mine like right outside my closet. I have May and then underneath that I have my poster of uh of Lennon Murphy that I've had since college. <laughs> Did is it do you have the 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 art that's done by uh Vanessa, Vanessa. McKee? Yeah, yes, yeah, it's yeah. such a cool it's such a cool print. I know. Um, yeah, I love her artwork so much. What's crazy um, is May I didn't see May when it first came out. Yeah. It makes no sense that somehow like this movie totally was like off my radar. Cause it's like, I love all those actors. I also love Jeremy Sisto. I love the, yeah. that style of film. And I didn't see it till years after it came out. Cause a, a friend of mine, he was a huge fan of it. Had her like tattooed on his arm. And I'm like, what oh, is this movie? Wow. <laughs> I finally watched it. And I'm like, Oh my God. Like this is, this is my kind of horror. Like I love movies like that, which, you know, May's different and she's not a serial killer, but just a, that intimate of a portrayal of a person, you know, kind of losing grip with reality. I'm just really interested in like complicated characters, you know, like her. Yeah. 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 I actually didn't, I, I saw May probably, I don't know, maybe a year or two after it came out. Like I saw it on the shelf at, at Blockbuster and I picked up, you know, how you always look at the, the cover art. Yeah. <laughs> I looked at the cover art and I'm like, wow, who's, who's you know, who's this, 
cool looking goth girl. And luckily my mom, you know, even though she wasn't into horror movies, she was cool with, with buying it for me. And um, so yeah, so <laughs> I've, I've always loved the movie ever since I first saw it. And um, yeah, that's really cool that that like was one of your main inspirations for the movie. And, um, and oh, another thing I had noticed um, that was really cool is the fact that your, uh, your puppy Pepper is in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I should have brought her in here. Oh my gosh. Um, I have two oh, chihuahuas, <laughs> which is funny because I'll joke that the other one, her name's Tina, yeah. that she's very mad at me for probably not being in the movie. I don't know. Um, she's Pepper is very like, I always joke that she's like not, she doesn't act like a dog. She's like, you can just bring her somewhere and put her down and she'll just <laughs> sit there and be quiet. She won't like try to bark and be crazy. <laughs> so she's very easy to be on camera. She's, she's not a great dog actor in the sense of if I need her to like, walk across the scene it's not easy to get her to do that <laughs> but like if she just needed to be cute and sit there that was not hard um but yeah she we put her in the short film and I always knew if we ever finally got to make the feature like she was gonna still be Claire's dog and be in the movie like as much as possible That's so but sweet. we had her like I'd have her on set all day all the days that we were shooting in Claire's house and yeah um just someone would be holding her behind the scenes. At all. She was like the 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 morale boost for everyone. <laughs> yeah, she's like she's like she's like Claire's best friend in the movie in a way. Yeah, it's kind of like the idea of putting her in there was to give a little bit more sympathy to Claire to show like this is like the one person <laughs> she, she can connect to. And that she isn't, you know, I've never wanted obviously portray her as like a pure evil creature and to show yeah. that she's a layered thing, but also selfishly wanted to put Pepper in there because she's so dang cute. <laughs> she's cute and she's, she's been doing such an awesome job, you know, with both of y'all promoting the movie on Instagram. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> she needs Instagram to get to work account. on that. So cute. She needs to be posting more. I feel like everyone follow Pepper at Pepper Six. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll be linking her um, her Instagram down below. Um, She's available for her own interview later as well, <laughs> <laughs> where she will just stare at the screen and say nothing. Oh, <laughs> she's she's famous. Trying to make her famous. <laughs> um. And so you you filmed the the movie at your actual hair salon that you work at. Yeah, um, which is a lot of fun because I'll tell clients while I'm doing their hair now I'll be like newer clients that don't know me. You know, a lot of people I've been doing their hair for a long time, so they know I make films and I've been trying to make this for a while. But I have clients that are newer, and when I'm kind of telling them about how I make movies and I've just finally made this first full movie and. They'll be like, oh, what's it about? <laughs> and they're like in my chair with scissors in my hand. And I'm like, oh, about a hairstylist who kills people. And then I'm like, don't be scared. It's fine. I swear. <laughs> um, but it was so cool to, to be able to shoot somewhere where I work for so many reasons. Cause I'm there all the time. And I could like, could always be thinking about like, how are we going to shoot this anytime I was working? Um, but actually we shot the short film in a different salon and mm -hmm. I love the design of that salon, but it was very, very small and what made it very, very challenging for the short film. And we knew in the future we were going to be in that salon for multiple scenes. And the salon I was in now, it's I've only been working there for two years. I moved salons and um, I just realized like it, sh it sh shared the same color palette that we were wanting to keep in the film from the previous short it kind of had the same gold and it had like a mix of a vintage and modern feeling so oh, cool. we just felt like the look of it fit it fit what we wanted and and then the convenience of the fact that I worked there just made it seem like <laughs> we really we really got our bang for our buck around there because the songs by owned by my good friend Chelsea Brown and um we shot so we shot in the salon we shot in the apartment above the salon we shot on the, in the street outside on the corner we just yeah. use like every aspect we can like the 
there's a scene where Claire stalks a girl home from a club and that's actually the apartment right above the salon, but we make you think it's in a totally different place. <laughs> but so many things were really consolidated. Yeah. And thanks to people, you know, being really generous with locations and stuff. <laughs> so did you have to, um, like, did you have like a, like a certain amount of days that you could like film in the salon? Like, did you have to say, okay, the salon is closed for filming certain days or did you have like your re like regular clients like actually getting their hair done in the background? Or how did that work? <laughs> it was actually very complicated. The scheduling all the locations for this movie became is a was a headache. <laughs> I, oh, I no. <laughs> but it's I sympathize for our assistant director Tom Allen. He because we had so many different locations and it's it's common on smaller budget films like ours that it's only one or two locations. We have like over 10 in the movie. And mm -hmm. so the, like the puzzle of trying to put together a schedule of like, you know, this location's available these days, but these actors are available those days. And then mm -hmm. trying to figure out, you know, where it all matches is the hardest part. The salon was one of the most challenging because of the fact we could, I couldn't really ask them to close down. You know, right. we, we couldn't afford basically to pay them to close to shut down right. is the idea and we all all the hairstylists there work for themselves so it would actually be like asking each separate stylist to close for the day it's not just like so it's a, a huge thing to ask so we really I can't remember how we managed to be we, we shot in the salon for three or four days I can't believe I don't remember what was three or four right now <laughs> That's okay. but but two overnights yeah and two during the day because we had or did we only do one during the day? But the one of the most complicated things was that background action of the other hairstylists in the you know in the back yeah. background doing people's hair and having that continuity line up when we were moving the camera. Hmm. But the way we actually all the hairstylists in the background are real hairstylists, which I thought that would be really. I was like, a lot of my friends are stylists. I'm going to try to hmm. have real hairstylists in the background instead of actors, so like right. the action will look natural and authentic and. Mm -hmm. So it's all real hairstylists and just like they all called friends and like, you want to get your, you know, pretend like you're getting hair, your hair done all day in the background of the scene. Um, but I was really excited from a hairstylist per perspective. I wanted that stuff to be as genuine as possible so that other hairstylists could watch it and, and, and real like know that this was made by someone who, no you know, does hair. Um, right. Yeah, yeah. But it was, it was challenging. I feel like the one full day, I can't even remember how we, we definitely shot one full day in the salon. It was another complicated thing was our coffee shop uh, location, mm -hmm. oh, which yeah. we needed a whole day in too. <laughs> and scheduling things is, is quite the thing, but so much as when you're making a horror movie, you're shooting overnights and that's not as hard, but hard on us, but not as hard on to find a location. <laughs> yeah. So we shot in my hometown of Kansas city which was like a dream for me. I was always hoping I could, you know, bring like my first film here and really like show off the city as much as possible. So like there's some scenes, there's like a scene that happens in the film in a parking lot, which could have been like anywhere in the world, but we or anywhere in the city, you know, with just a boring old background, but we were really looking for cool places. Like we found uh, this top of a parking garage where parking deck, so we could have the, the city in, really shown off in the backgrounds and I got to we got to shoot in a lot of places like I grew up going to like there's a big dance club scene which we actually turned this place into a dance club it's really like a venue that bands and musicians play and we like chopped this place in half with curtains and then turned it into a dance club <laughs> which was so fun because i like I'm a huge fan of dancing and hip-hop music which is something that you don't see that much in horror movies and Especially when they yeah, do. No, you that, yes. yeah. <laughs> You're right. You really don't. <laughs> and when they go to a dance club, it's always like techie, electronic type dance music. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. I know that that stuff plays at those places, but and it's easier to find that from a producer, like to for a film. But I was like, I want hit like rap music playing, like music that I like to be playing in this club. Yeah. And so it's so cool to like create a dance club scene and then actually find songs by friends of mine that we were able to use. 
but like this whole project, like connected to that is like, like everyone I know and so many things I love, like in this movie, I asked like every friend I know to use one of their songs or every location is like a friend's place. So it's like the whole project is like super personal in that way. It's like everyone in the background is either a friend or I cut their hair at some point. Or <laughs> So it's like when I watch it, it's just like, like warms my heart. Cause I'm like, oh, there's that place. There's my friend Bob in the background. Or it's just like <laughs> yeah, wildly personal in that way. And I think you, I think the film actually, like it made the festival run. Was it, was it all virtual last year or was some of it like in person? It was mostly virtual. We were, we were fortunate to do a couple in person. Um, we premiered at Fantastic Fest, which was virtual. And then in October, we played a couple of drive-ins, which was really cool. Oh, it's cool. been <laughs> really cool that, you know, drive-ins are becoming, which they never went away, but they're, it's like becoming popular again because yeah. it's a way to get the hell out of the house and do something. Yeah. Um, I'm hoping they're going to, you know, like it's getting warmer now. We'll bring the drive in will be huge this summer. But we got to I got to actually go to Knoxville Horror Film Festival where they held it at the drive in. And then even one in Chicago at the drive in. And that one was like a couple of days before Halloween and it sold out and it was freezing. So we we're like, this is how much people want to get out of the yeah. house. Like, it's just, we were all, you know, I think we're all cooped up. We're like, if I can go sit in my car and watch a movie, that's more exciting than being at home now. <laughs> but um, more recently, because we're still playing festivals internationally and even still here, because I feel like the whole world's kind of adapting to COVID and changing the rules. Like a lot of festivals wouldn't, wouldn't, would disqualify a film, you know, if it was already mm. streaming on a platform, but since the world is so different now, we still are playing a few even in the States, like the Florida Film Festival next month, which will be virtual and in person yeah. and Panic Fest will be both. Yeah, I saw that one mentioned on Twitter. Yeah. Cool. And Panic is our kind of uh, the Kansas, our local like big oh, genre okay. festival. It's a Kansas City festival. I I had heard from them that Arrow Video was working with them on a couple movies. And I was like, are you guys going to show the stylist? I haven't even told them <laughs> that I, I wanted to show if you guys are showing movies. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's that'll be cool because it'll be virtual and in person, very limited in person. It's like a 30 percent, I think, max capacity in the theater. Uh, but uh, the the theater that holds that hosts Panic Fest is the showed the movie in February for women in horror month with a very limited crowd, oh, awesome. yeah. but it was cool. Cause that was actually the first time I got to watch it in a theater with people because mm -hmm. the drive-in thing is cool, but you don't have that same experience of hearing the reactions because everyone's in their car. Yeah. So to finally be in a room and actually, you know, hear and feel the reactions the in real time. Yeah. yeah exactly. The energy. Yeah. That's, I mean, I, I don't, I don't know about everybody, but I mean, me, it's like, you know, I, I love going to the movie theater because, you know, it's like you get, you get to, you get that immediate feedback from the audience. Yeah. You can tell, like, they don't even have to say anything to you and you know, if moments worked or not. I feel like that's really also how, like we learn as filmmakers when we sit in the audience and hear like specific moments, like did that joke land? Did that scare land? Did that, can you feel the tension in the audience? You know, yeah. that's the, that's nerve wracking and one of the most fun parts of <laughs> making a film, I think. <laughs> um, but I always think watching it with a group is like equally yeah. exciting and mm -hmm. terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so cool. And uh, I'm, it's it's just so awesome you know the the huge amount of success that you're still can you know the, the movie is like still playing at festivals and playing on arrow video and you know it seems like it's everywhere you know? <laughs> which is thank so cool. you yeah. and we have more exciting stuff coming the the film will come out on blu-ray from arrow in june oh okay, and cool. and like and digitally so you can own it you know either digitally or physical which I know for all of us horror nerds, like I'm just so excited to have a, a nice physical copy of the media. movie. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Filled with so many special features and, and extra stuff. Oh, that's going to be so cool. Well, thank <laughs> you so much for taking the time to, to talk to me today. And thank uh, you for having me. 
Yeah, you're welcome. And um, for everybody that's out there watching, you can watch, you can uh, check out the stylist on Arrow video. I'm going to go ahead and link any, any links Jill wants me to, <laughs> wants me to put, I'm going to put them in the description and um, thanks for watching and I'll talk to y'all later. Bye y'all. <laughs> <laughs>